both. I'm happy to introduce my interviewee, Professor Douglas Finn. Professor Finn is a theologian from Boston College, United States of America. He received his PhD in the University of Notre Dame. Uh, Professor Finn, could you tell us a bit more about your uh, field of academic scholarship, your interests, your background, uh, etc.? Well, um, I study patristics, so I focus mainly on the early church from 200 to about 500 or so, and my main area of interest is the theology of St. Augustine of Hippo. Mm, this matter is, uh, of course, very interesting, uh, at least to me, and to, uh, of course, to specialists, but for many people, even Christians, I believe this might seem as history in a strict sense. What I mean is that uh, for some people, it's uh, hardly, uh, it might seem as something hardly relevant to the present day, to the problems of present day, to contemporary life, etc. But how would you react uh, on this? Uh, why this is relevant today still? Well, um, it, I think one of the things I find most fascinating about the early church is uh, especially some of the figures like Augustine, the Cappadocians, um, and even earlier figures like Origen, is you see um, well-educated Christians uh, in the late antique period of time trying to take the, the best science of their day um, to, to uh, acquaint themselves, or they were already acquainted, with uh, literary traditions, with rhetorical training, and the best philosophy of their day, Stoicism, Neoplatonism, others, and um, trying to use uh, the secular disciplines as, um, so to use those tools as, uh, as a means of um, articulating Christian faith and communicating that to the, the society around them. So as a means of preaching the gospel to, um, to the best and brightest of their day. And um, while I don't think that we could necessarily use the same kinds of philosophy or the same kinds of science that uh, Augustine or Origen would have availed themselves of, um, I think that in terms of a basic approach to the world and openness to the universality of knowledge um, and, uh, and a willingness to communicate with broader society uh, as Christians rather than to simply uh, be, turn inwards, become an insular community and separate themselves from the world, uh, I think that that basic approach can still be uh, very, very uh, fruitful. And um, and can uh, and I think in that regard, then we can learn from uh, the uh, the methods that they used, but also some of the uh, the conclusions that they reached. So basically, uh, there is a way of thinking uh, of the fathers which will always be important and actual and relevant. Yes. Inasmuch as um, that the task of Christian theology at, at any given point in history and in any given place in the world is to um, preach the gospel in a way that is um, understandable to people around them. And um, the means of making that gospel comprehensible will not be the same at any given point in time or at any given place in the world. Let me now release our academic conversation with a personal question, if I, if I can do so. Mm -hmm. uh, you made a decision to come to Ukraine now when the country is basically in the state of war. Uh, weren't you anxious? And uh, what, what were your thoughts? So admittedly, um, when I first uh, applied for the conference and um, and decided to come. Uh, I was I was primarily interested in uh, the historical side of the conference, uh, so I was interested in learning more about the history of early Christian theology from other scholars of early Christianity. 
so my interest was very much scholarly, historical, um, and professional. Um, that said, however, uh, I'm not oblivious to the, uh, to the current political situation uh, in the eastern part of the country. And um, my family and my girlfriend were certainly pr more concerned than I probably should have been. Uh, uh, and uh, so for their sake, I made sure to kind of keep reading up, uh, reaching out to certain people in the United States government, looking at the information that, that the State Department was putting out about the safety of um, the western part of the country. But I also reached out to um, Father Ole and other people here. Uh, they reassured me that the situation here in Lviv was relatively stable, um, so I was willing to come. I, I think that more important than how I felt before I came was uh, how I felt after I arrived. Um, and in addition to simply, it's simply it being true that, that Lviv is safe and stable, um, I I think that um, that I was I was I was quite moved actually by the the um, the hospitality that I received when I came here. Um, uh, so uh, more than just uh, so I my 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 desires in terms of uh, um, making professional contacts or learning more about the early church, getting some new ideas testing my ideas with some other people, those were certainly satisfied. Um, I got to talk to many good patristic scholars while I was here, many good church historians. Uh, but I think what made the conference itself so rewarding was the human side. And that was related very much or due to the, the, the hospitality I received. Um, but also the um, the 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 amount of uh, learning or how much I could learn about uh, the Ukraine from the Ukrainians who welcomed us here and hosted us, um, and uh, and how much I was able to see the the great desire on on your part, so the people here to um, to reach out to the world, to reach out from the east to the west. Um, and uh, to discover the relevance of what we were studying, so to discover the relevance of the longer tradition of historical theology uh, to their own current situation. Uh, so um, finding, to encountering people who were taking, you know, what could have been very dry and very obscure historical material and, um, and uh, gaining a lot of inspiration from it. That was, that was very rewarding and moving. Mm. So, uh, thank you. Thank you for your uh, good uh, impressions from our conference and our university. But uh, as you might know, we are only in the beginning of our way of doing theology here in Ukraine. And the reason is obviously a huge, a great interruption, great break, uh, made by uh, Soviet Union and Soviet government with its uh, atheistic propaganda. Uh, while you, on the contrary, uh, and uh, your school uh, has a long tradition of doing theology and good theology and professors from Boston College uh, are famous, uh, famous in Europe, uh, in Ukraine. Uh, could you uh, share with us your experience, which could be, and I believe will be, valuable on our way of, of restoration of theological education, theological research here? Well, I mean, you, you, you say we have a, a long tradition, but I, I think that if we, if, we, if we pay attention to the, the large scope of history, um, the American Catholic theological tradition is itself also in its relative infancy. Um, it's, it's not that old, and uh, to be Catholic even in America was, even 75 years ago, uh, not a happy prospect. Um, and, uh, and so uh, all that to say that no tradition exists in a vacuum, and uh, even 
the the uh, the school from which I come uh, is the our tradition of theology, if you want to call it a tradition, at that is is not so old. And um, I guess the more important point is that there's a reason we call ourselves Catholic, and um, in, in the sense of universal, universal, or in the sense of the church's universality. And so I think that, uh, that there's a, there should be a great excitement on your part, um, just as there is on ours, um, that, uh, that we have resources that predate us. Um, we have a, a very long tradition in a universal sense upon which we can draw. And, um, and so, I mean, that's what we're doing. What I'm trying to do is to draw upon the traditions of the early church, um, uh, draw upon the traditions of, the, of medieval theology as well, um, from the West and from the East, from the Latin and the Greek and the Syriac traditions. Um, and my, my advice is for you all to, to do the same. Um, the best thing that you can do is um, strive for excellence in your scholarship, and if that means that you need to draw upon the resources of places that already have traditions of excellence, then by all means do so. Um, but in so doing, um, don't forget where you come from and where you are, and, um, and always bring the ancient traditions into dialogue with your current situation. Um, so to, to retrieve Augustine, in 21st century United States or 21st century America it will be a different task from retrieving Augustine or the Cappadocians or Origen in 21st century Ukraine. But, uh, but both of us are striving to retrieve Augustine. We don't have anyone who goes back as ancient in the United States. Um, and uh, and so uh, so we're not as different as we might uh, we might seem. So will this, in at the end of the day, in the final result, uh, give something peculiar, which comes from Lviv, kind of originality of this school of theology? I'm not sure I understand the question. Uh, so of course, uh, of course, we have to draw upon tradition. Of course, we have to use the achievements of other uh, other uh, schools, other traditions, uh, other experiences. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, will they? Uh, will this uh, finally? Uh, let us uh, give us a possibility to make something original. Well, I think the like we know, for instance, we know a name, a Paris or, or, or Notre Dame. We know there is a school in Notre Dame. We know there are particular views, particular orientation, uh, which are uh, immediately and necessarily associated with Notre Dame or with London. Will this happen in Lviv, on your opinion? Um, well, what I see here is a great ambition, and um, and not only dreams, but a willingness to um, to do the work necessary to realize them. Um, things are happening here. Um, you have not only new physical buildings, but uh, what seems to be a very vibrant student community. Um, you're working to make uh, um, this a place for important scholarly conversations through conferences and the invitation of speakers. Uh, and I think that perhaps the best thing you have going for you is, um, is a couple things. Um, Lviv is very much a gateway between the East and the West. Um, it's situated in the Ukraine, but it's also very close to, uh, to Europe. And um, it sits at a place uh, geographically and intellectually and theologically between the Orthodox and um, the Roman Catholic traditions, between Poland and Russia and in the Ukraine itself. Uh, and I think that um, those of you here working on theology in Lviv should capitalize on that, um, on that, uh, the, that crossroads that you you, you occupy um, and uh, take advantage of that kind of centrality 
and that liminal space between different uh, between different traditions, and uh, use that position um, as one of strength draw, to draw from both of those traditions and create a kind of um, a distinctive, the Vivian uh, Christian worldview. Well, as you mentioned, you came here for a conference, for a patristic con uh, conference, and conferences are often in the first step to arrange a connection and network networking etc do you think uh, what do you think about the prospective possible cooperation between your institution and our institution through overseas well um, certainly these decisions are made by people who are uh, more important than 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 I am, um, but uh, but I, I think that um, I certainly think that uh, I mean I can only speak from my own person you know from my own personal perspective and then from what I know about my university uh, I think that we could certainly use more um, more uh, contact with the East and um, with Eastern Catholic and Eastern Orthodox traditions. Uh, it's strange, but uh, we, we're in a city with quite a few uh, Eastern Orthodox communities, but um, the ability to reach out and to make some of these connections would be, I think, very fruitful, or the possibility of doing so. Okay, I'll thank you, Professor, for this conversation. And it's, it's my pleasure to, and it's our pleasure to meet you here in Lviv. Wish you a safe trip back home. Thank you.